everybody, how's it going? I'm here with a bit of an overdue video, but it's mainly because I just haven't had a need to use this yet. But a while back, I was approached by Saker to review their mini chainsaw. Um, so this is pretty awesome. I'm going to do something really cool with it today. But I figured I would take a look at it first. So what's in the box? Uh, we've got power cord. Uh, this must be to uh, tighten it up. Uh, I'll figure out what all these do. <laughs> and there's the battery. I've got to go charge that before we get going. So here is the chainsaw itself. And I've got to say, um, I don't really know how to judge this from a point of view of somebody who's actually used a chainsaw before. <laughs> this is all going to be on the perspective of someone who's never used one before, who doesn't have a lot of experience with these type of things. So I'm going to read the instructions very carefully while I charge the battery, and then we're going to go do something cool with it. Okay, so we've got the battery locked and loaded. So here's a couple of features about this that I like. We got a safety button here, so I can press this trigger all I want. It's not going to run unless I press this button down, hold it down, pull and press the trigger, and it'll run. Now, that sucks if you're a lefty, but I'm a righty, so it works for me. Um, I suppose you could use this, you know, finger here and kind of hold it in while you press the trigger, but uh, seems like a pain in the butt. Uh, it's got a good safety guard here. Now, if you remove this bolt, you can slip this off, and that's where you can tension the chain, but the chain seems to have the right tension on it right now. It seems like it's all set up and ready to go. Um, you can also oil it there. And also underneath here is uh, the release so that you can take it off. You can change the chain and all of that. So it's pretty small. It's pretty lightweight. It says that you can cut anything up to four inches thick with this. I'm not going to go put it that far to the test because I don't have anything that uh, big to cut right now. We're just going to cut a bunch of sumac. So let's give this a whirl here. Not bad. Let's go give it a shot. In front of the house, there is a big stand of sumac. That probably goes back like 10, 15 feet. And so I've got to get this out of here actually, because in a couple of weeks, we're going to have the heating system installed and the HVAC tech is going to come and want to dig a trench along the side of the house. And if they can't get to it, that's a little bit of a pain in the butt. So let's go take these down. First time using a chainsaw, y'all. It, it, it may be small, but it's something. It's a little overpowered for something only an inch and a half thick, but it's doing the job. Saker Mini Chainsaw for a first timer, super, super easy to use, super, super easy to put together and, and get started and took all of that down in just a few minutes. Now, what are we going to do with all of this sumac that I took down? Well, let me show you. And now the rest is goat snacks. <laughs> Yahoo! Snack time! Now I know what you're thinking. Danny, 
in your last video, you only had two goats. Where did the other two goats come from? Yeah, well, that's a future video. I'm still working on it. So let's answer the question at hand. Why do I have a pile of sumac branches? Let's go inside out of these mosquitoes and I'll tell you all about it. Welcome to my house that has paint and floors and light. Hooray! Now, why do I have a whole bunch of sumac out there laying on the ground? So two words, tree hay. And I know that sounds strange, but this is a concept that I first heard before I even had goats, when I was talking to a friend of mine and they introduced me to the concept of silvopasture. Now what silvopasture is, a very basic broad concept here, is not just using grasses for a pasture, but especially in the case of goats, using a multitude of different types of forage and browse for your animals so that you're not having to rely on baled hay as much. Now, I originally got the goats so that they could, well, I want them for dairy, but while they're young, before they can be bred, they can clear this whole property for me. They can eat all of the multiflora rose, the bindweed, the bittersweet vine, the sumac, all of that stuff. I do have some issues with some trees, which I will talk about in a later video, but I wanted to get rid of all of that and clear it out so that I just had a clean slate to work with. And then I was going to sow their pasture area with things that are good browse for goats, like chicory and plantain and alfalfa and Bermuda grasses, and rye grass and things like that. And also bushes and trees like blackberries, raspberries. My thought was I would grow the blackberries outside along the fence run then the goats could nibble from one side, I could pick from the other, and then I only have one row of blackberries to maintain and keep in check because the goats will keep it busy from the other side. Not bad. Also trees like willow and mulberry and hackberry, things like that are very, very good browse for goats. And once the trees get established, you can actually harvest from them uh, branches, small branches and all the leaves and you can dry it and store it for winter feed. It became clear that very quickly that two six month old Nigerian dwarf goats was not going to clear this property in any meaningful way before the end of the season. I did already plan on getting a couple extra goats. I have them, that video is coming soon, I promise. You gotta meet those two, they're adorable. Even then, four six month old Nigerian dwarf goats are not going to clear this property in any meaningful way. So I figured I would just take down the sumac that already needs to come down and get it out of the way of the HVAC guys who are coming to dig the trench and all of that. Those needed to go. So. Since I have to take them down, my goats aren't gonna get to come over here and munch them early, I may as well put it aside. Now, I definitely do not have enough tree hay here to sustain them through the whole winter. I will be relying mostly, almost entirely on baled hay. I have a shipment of hay coming in a few weeks. I'm gonna stack it in the addition. I'm basically using that as my de facto barn workshop for now, but the goats really love sumac. It's their favorite thing. So I figure I may as well cut down what I know they're not going to get to this summer, lay it out while we have a few nice dry days, and then I can bundle it up, throw it in the addition, and it will be a little extra snack, a little variety for them here and there throughout the winter. I'd like to think that in the future with a small herd and several willows and mulberries as they get up and growing, because willow grows very, very fast. So within a few years, I'm hoping that I can at least make a meaningful dent in what I use for hay, but on two acres, there's really not a way that I could make this scalable to take care of the whole winter. And that Saker Mini Chainsaw is going to make it a lot easier to harvest because I just had some loppers and it took a lot of arm strength to get through some of those bigger branches. So that little chainsaw, zip, 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 done makes it really easy i'm gonna pop a link down in the description to amazon for the saker mini chainsaw right now it's not an affiliate link because i don't have my amazon store set up but i am doing that so i am gonna have an amazon storefront yay where i'm gonna have links to all the products that i actually use i don't like to put anything out there or endorse things unless i personally use them love them I try to be authentic with that. I'm not just going to do a product review and be like, I love it, buy it. 
and never use it again. <laughs> uh, I've got a few other products that I'm going to be testing out that people have sent me. There's like a laser level, which is going to be super helpful for doing my kitchen remodel um, and some other things around the house. That's going to be awesome. Uh, we're getting to my bedroom finally, because uh, with getting all the goat stuff ready, I really slacked off on that. And there's just been a lot going on. But I am jazzed. I am pumped. I am excited. We're going to get to that bedroom. The heating system is being put in in a few weeks. Uh, just waiting for um, some payments to come in and then I'll be good with that. Oh, and we're going to do a t-shirt order pretty soon. Um, I have two t-shirts that are going to be coming out in succession. Um, first, we're going to do a Wicked Awesome Gardening Logo t-shirt. So that's going to come out. And then um, after that, uh, I have another t-shirt idea that my friend is sketching out for me and it's going to be really cute and funny and it's going to feature Cory the goat and they're going to be through Natural Threads, which is a great company. I've been going back and forth with them the last week or so and so we're getting the mock-up for the logo t-shirt. So I'll let you know when that comes out. And ADHD circling back around to that Amazon storefront thing. Um, while it's not an Amazon storefront link right now, at some point, once I get that set up, I am going to change the link to an Amazon storefront link. So I will get a small commission for for that uh, if you go through and buy it then. Uh, who knows when that's going to happen because ADHD and I get things done when I get things done. That's kind of how things work and why we haven't had videos for a while. More videos coming up though because I have a video that I shot for Homesteaders of New England this past weekend where I was on a Q&A panel with Morgan Gold from Goldshaw Farm about finding your homestead, uh, moving to a new state to homestead. Uh, it was a really great panel, a lot of fun. So excited for that. Um, Homesteaders of New England just in general was amazing. I was so happy to be a part of it. Um, Jack from the Mindful Homestead, Dawn from Little Mountain Life, and uh, then we had uh, Brian, uh, from the Homestead Journey podcast. I mean, just so many great people were there. Um, just so much fun. I can't wait to go again next year. Next year, I might be a speaker. I might actually be presenting myself, which blows my mind. I need to find my topic. Uh, um, and now that I've rambled for like six minutes, um, love you guys. I'm so glad that you're here, I'll get that video on Homesteaders of New England out. There's going to be a video where I'm doing some actual gardening at my new homestead. Yay! Um, I might actually put those videos together. Um, and then also the story of the new goats. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.